Hey, I need to ask you a favor. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. What can I do for you? We need to book these four adjusting journal entries for our clients and I need it done within the next 30 minutes. Do you think you can handle it? Yeah, absolutely. I've been a licensed CPA for over 10 years, so I think I can handle that. Thanks. I believe in you. Here you go. All right, so I got these four business transactions to come up with the journal entries for. And being a CPA over the last 10 years or so, I need no help really coming up with these journal entries. I can easily do it. But what I like to do is use a product like Google Gemini or ChatGPT to come up with the first draft. So basically, it's acting like my junior assistant who is totally not going to take my job one day in the future. Uh, but they come up with a draft, right? I can then review it. And if I uh, like it and it agrees to the accounting principles that I know to be true as a CPA, then I'll accept these journal entries and go ahead and record it. So let's go ahead and look at the business transactions and then test out uh, Google Gemini and its ability to review the accounting principles and come up with the right uh, recording of the journal entries. So we have here transactions one, two, three, and four. Uh, let's go through uh, transaction number one and test out Google Gemini. So uh, the company records monthly accrual for allowance of doubtful accounts. The balance in the account as of February 29th, 2024 was $100,000. On March 29th, 2024, one of your customers, Duke Inc., files for bankruptcy. So now I guess we have to write off whatever they owe us because there's a likelihood that they're not going to pay us. Uh, the customer has $25,000 of outstanding invoices. How do you record the journal entry for the write-off of the accounts receivable? So let's go ahead and copy this uh, transaction here and paste it into Gemini and see what it comes up with. We'll paste it. All right. So it's kind of recapping uh, what we told it. So it's digesting the information and it came up with a debit uh, to allowance for doubtful account for $25,000 and a credit to accounts receivable for $25,000, which is correct. So in this one, I'll give it an A plus because my worry is that it would do a debit to an expense account, like maybe a uh, bad debt expense. Uh, but what, what we have here is that we have a recording of allowance for doubtful account that has a balance in it of $100,000. So when you write off an AR, you have to write it off against the allowance that you previously booked, right? So it's a debit to allowance, reducing that contra account receivable account and a credit to write off the receivable for $25,000. Uh, so I'll give this one an A plus. Okay, great. So I'm going to accept this draft and this is a journal entry that I can go ahead and book in this case. Uh, let's move on to transaction number two. The company ordered $300,000 worth of inventory on February 14th, 2024. Uh, the vendor terms are FOB destination. So FOB is free on board, meaning the vendor is paying for the shipping and destination means that the title and risk of ownership of the inventory transfers to the company at the time of uh, arriving at the destination, right? Uh, that's important because that's when you record the inventory uh, on your books when you receive it because the risk only transferred when you receive the goods. Inventory was delivered on February 28th, 2024. Uh, the invoice was issued by the vendor in March, so the month after that. What journal entries would you need to record in February and in March? Okay, let's go ahead and take this transaction into Gemini. All right, it's thinking and digesting. All right, so it's recapping the situation. Um, you know, it's nice because it explains to you what FOB destination means and, and all that stuff. Um, what it's saying here is that it's going to go ahead and record on February 28th, which is the day that we received the inventory. It's going to debit inventory for $300,000 which is correct. Um, you're not going to wait until March to record the inventory when you receive the invoice. You're going to record it in February because the risk uh, and title transferred uh, to you as the company in the end of February. Okay, so it's a $300,000 debit to inventory and a credit to accounts payable for $300,000. Now, see, with this one, I may disagree with this one because the credit here in this case shouldn't be accounts payable because the invoice hasn't been issued yet. Uh, that is a liability, but it should be an accrued liability in this case, right? So you're accruing because you received the goods, right? Uh, the accounts payable itself will be recorded 
in March once uh, you receive the actual uh, invoice and you have an invoice number and a due date and all the good stuff that are associated with an invoice. Um, so I'll give this one maybe a B because it did recognize the inventory in the correct month and the liability in the correct month, which is February. Uh, however, it's using the, the account that I wouldn't be using, right? I would be using um, an accrued liability and then uh, I would reverse out the accrued liability in March and book the actual accounts payable once I have the inventory, uh, sorry, the invoice in hand. All right, let's go ahead and look at transaction three. The company sells website hosting services. Uh, in April, 2024, the company signs up a new customer for a three year contract for a total of $2 million expected revenue over the three year contract. Part of the agreement, the company um, agreed with the supplier that it will pay 500k to satisfy the previous provider early exit fee. So in this case, uh, we enter the new contract and, and part of that contract with the customer, we are saying that we will pay them 500k uh, to cover the early exit fee that they have with the previous supplier that we are replacing now. Um, how do you record the journal entry for the early exit fee? Okay, let's go ahead and try it out. All right, so um, it recaps the situation here. The company uh, is acquiring a new customer with a three year contract for $2 million. Uh, to secure the customer, you're paying 500K early exit fee to previous provider. Okay, so it's recording a debit to customer acquisition cost, um, 500,000, and a credit to cash for 500,000. And it explains that um, debit to customer acquisition cost, this account is used to capture the expense incurred to acquire a new customer. The early exit fee is a direct cost associated with acquiring the customer. We shouldn't be expensing the 500K in this case in the period. The 500K should be capitalized um, under the revenue recognition rules and under the matching principle of accounting. The 500K should be recognized over the period of the revenue that you will be uh, earning from this customer. So if you're earning revenue over a three year contract, in this case, the 500K should be amortized over the whole period right um, and shouldn't be it should not be recorded as an expense in the period um, in the current period it should be amortized over the three years so i'm just reading this to see if gemini means a cost as a capitalization which is the correct way to capitalize the costs or is it expense in the period i think it means um, the 500k is considered a cost to acquire a customer and should be expense over the life of the contract okay okay so it got it correctly um it is recognizing a capitalization. This is an asset. So a debit to an asset, which is a customer acquisition cost and a credit to cash. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to transaction number four. The company sells software as a service. In April, 2024, the company signs up a new customer for a three year contract. The agreement is worth $9 million of expected revenue, 3 million each year of service. Uh, the company paid $200,000 commission to its sales employee in connection with this agreement in April of 2024. Record the journal entry for the commission transaction. All right, so let's go ahead and copy this into Gemini. All right, so it's going to go ahead and digest it and then recap it. And then it's going to record the journal entry. So in this case, I'm going to give it um, an F. This is incorrect because the debit shouldn't be an expense. This is a cost that is incremental, that is associated with a new contract acquisition. Uh, and under revenue recognition rules, the expenses associated um, with the acquisition of a new contract, if the cost is incremental, meaning the cost is only incurred as a result of signing the contract, meaning if we don't sign the contract, we don't incur the cost. If that's the case, then it's capitalized and amortized over the life of the customer or the agreement. Um, what Gemini is suggesting is that we would expense the whole thing in the period, which is incorrect. So I'm going to give it an F. Um, so as you can see, uh, Gemini uh, is a hit or miss. It gets it correctly maybe half the time is what I'm seeing from this. Uh, maybe slightly more than half the time, but it is still beneficial because um, 
it gives you at least a first draft that you can look at and evaluate. Um, however, it doesn't replace um, the judgment of the accountant, at least currently in 2024, maybe in the future as this product evolves, uh, as I made a joke at the beginning of the video that it might actually take my job at some point. Uh, but my assessment is that the point at which it can take my job is far in the future, uh, probably 10 years or more from now, um, if I would have to guess. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If it provided value, give it a like because that's how you can help the channel grow. If you know somebody who would benefit from watching this video, go ahead and share it with them and I'll see you in the next video.